You're used to seeing me attach a switch to the inputs here to drive servos to operate points or semaphores. But what I thought I'd do today is show you something a little bit different. We've recently launched a range of feedback modules that use detectors such as this occupancy detector here. And these normally connect via this connector to a feedback module and you can see other videos on the website for that showing how it works. And that feeds back information into a multi-panel to display that data. But what I thought I'd do today is something a little bit different. I've slightly modified this cable and by connecting the output of the feedback module directly to a switch input on a servo controller, you're going to see me track circuit a semaphore signal so that every time a locomotive enters a, a block that this is detecting current on, you'll see the semaphore fall to danger and remain at danger while that block's occupied. So I have my servo controller here. What I'm going to do is attach some power through the connector. Place the servo controller here. This is my block detector and the details were in the block detection video I put up a few weeks ago about how to wire this. But essentially this is in series with one of the feeds to the track. Let's connect my power source. Uh, we'll need a loco. And I'll need a semaphore. And what I have here is a modified dapole semaphore. So I'll drop this at the start of the block. The actual block limits are from here to here, that's this one section. So if a loco's in this block, then it should pick up and the semaphore should move. So I'm going to plug the semaphore into servo position number one, and I'm going to take the cable and plug it into the block detector, and I'll take the red lead onto input number one of the servo controller and the black to the switch common. Let's give it some power. And what I'll do now is I'll set the range up. So I'll go into program mode and then I will set it up for an upper quadrant semaphore and we'll set the range of motion. So there's clear and let's come down and that will do for danger. So that's now programmed, ready to operate as a semaphore. Let's restart the servo controller. I'll apply some DCC power and if I move my loco round here it comes you can see as it gets here the semaphore moves so the first problem we can see here is that the semaphore has gone to clear when it's in the block and if I push the loco out it moves to danger. And this is exactly the opposite behaviour that we want. Now there's an undocumented command on the servo controller that will allow you to reverse the input. So if I turn the power off, press with one finger the mode button and then turn the servo controller on. What it's done now is it's reversed all of the inputs. So as I'm in the block, I'm at danger. And if I exit the block, it will move to clear. So let's get the loco going. And let's enter the block. Keep your eye on the semaphore. And exit the block. Now while I'm in the block, the semaphore will always remain at danger. 
so it's not on a timer it'll stay there forever let's exit again Of course, if I back out, once I've cleared the block again, So I just thought that was a neat little trick to show you uh, with a standard servo controller and a servo controlled semaphore signal using one of the inexpensive block detectors and to get it to move in the right direction I pressed and held the mode button which simply reversed all of the inputs which makes them fit for use with this in the normal direction. Now what I've shown you will only work with a standalone servo controller, it won't work with a multi-panel. But we've got to save something for another day, haven't we? Thanks for watching.